Yeah, so it's like the fan, the reception from the fans has been really, really amazing. Um, not just online, but especially in person. It's really, it's very different in person. Um, and it, at the end of the day, that's all that matters to me is you know my fans and the kids and the people that come up to me. Yeah, you're. Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. You are watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. My name is TK Trinidad, and today we have an amazing show, and of course, nothing but amazing guests. And today is no exception. She finally made her wrestling debut. She's the ultimate best friend. You can see her everywhere, and the ultimate Bailey fan as well. Please welcome Izzy Moreno. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing amazing. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, let's get into it. So, um, so much to talk about. Uh, the first question, the, the burning question I have is how many friendship bracelets have you made thus far? Oh, I've made a lot. I love this question. I, nobody's ever asked me that. Honestly, I know I, I have to have made over like a hundred, maybe a hundred or 200. Cause I've made a lot. Cause I, Honestly, I try to make, I, I don't say I try, I literally make more for every single show I go to. Um, so like, I, I think I started to make them like before my debut match. And I was like, I would just hand them out. Cause what I, so what I like to do is and this is kind of like my little secret with it for shows that people like don't really know me, uh -huh. like I'll give it to them. And then when I eventually like make my entrance, like they know who I am and they're like, oh yeah, we're BFFs. That's kind of like the whole psychology behind it, but also like the whole BFF thing was really important to me. Um, a lot of people were like, oh, where'd you get the idea from? And truthfully, I got it from Taylor Swift, so I'm a big Swifty. Um, and so, yeah, I've made a lot. I actually have a convention this week and I totally have been putting off making bracelets. So I'm like, I've been making them in, in between my interviews today. So I'm like, oh, hopefully I have enough. But yeah, I have made a lot since like, August, since like this past summer to now. It's a lot of beads, a lot of beads in my house. <laughs> yeah, I um, I don't, I tend to. This might be a tip you could take it or leave it. I tend to get a lot of work done um, during that Christmas break. Like that's usually the time where like I'll like schedule all my social media for the year, do all that stuff. So maybe mm -hmm. you can try to do like a bulk amount because I, yep. I, I have a strange feeling as you continue because you've only just started. So you're gonna like it's gonna be like you might need 200 per show at one point. So if you kind of do a stack, a, a stock up, then, you know, maybe, maybe if they're not doing anything. Oh wrong, man. Just putting it out there for you. Um, I listen, I have to, I really do because like winter break, like, so this is, so this upcoming weekend's like my last booking of the year. So I'm like, and I didn't, I knew how much trouble I was going to do this year, but I was like, like, I think like after this booking, I'm just going to like chill like, I'm obviously gonna work out. I think I'm gonna go like extra hard in the gym because like working out and traveling is like sometimes so hard. But like, oh my man, I'm like really excited to just like relax a little bit, enjoy time at home. Cause there were like some weekends, and I know this is completely normal being a pro wrestler, but for, for me, I was like, oh snap. I was like, this is what it's really like. And I, it's honestly been so much fun. But like there were like weekends where I wasn't home for like three weekends straight. And I was like, man, I just want to sleep in my bed for a weekend because you know, like I'd have school in the weekend and like Friday morning I travel. So I was like, man. And then like, it's, it's so nice to have like just a weekend at home. And like, I really enjoy that time. Cause like before I was like, oh, it's just a weekend. Now I'm like, it's a weekend and I'm going to enjoy the heck out of this weekend. <laughs> yeah. You definitely appreciate the weekends a little bit more once you kind of lose them to work and other things. So uh, yeah, definitely enjoy, enjoy mm -hmm. the weekend. Um, but let's talk about your debut. So you, you, this has been years in the making. Uh, you finally made your debut. Um, you know, now you're kind of letting it sit with you. What, what's, what's that feeling? What's the overall feeling been like? Oh, it's been really awesome. First off, I'm loving the question so far. I'm like, I feel like I have so many, like, I do like interviews and somebody's like, so like, how'd you get into wrestling? But I love the question so far. I'm having a great time, by the way. Um, you know, it's honestly, it's been a really good feeling. And you know, I love when people come up to me and they're like, oh, you know, how does it feel now? And it's like, it's such a, re it really is such a good feeling because like you said, this has been eight, this has been a long time in the making for me. It's been eight years. You know, I decided I wanted to be a pro wrestler since I was eight and, you know, I'm 16 now. So now that it's like finally happening, it's, it's very surreal, honestly. Um, you know, I, there was one weekend where I was traveling and I was like, 
man, I'm a pro wrestler. Like I like the reason why I'm traveling is no longer to like attend shows or for media mm -hmm. or to just to go train and like a show happens to be that weekend that I'm in Texas. Like, no, it's like, cause I'm actually wrestling and it's really, it's, it's a really, really good feeling. Cause you know, I've worked so hard at this dream and the fact that like, I literally get to tell people like, Oh, I'm a pro wrestler instead of I'm training to be a pro wrestler. It's a, it's a pretty cool feeling at the end of the day. It is. I, I, I can only imagine. So you referenced that when you did your kind of first debut, uh, you know, you saw you made eye contact with your parents, you, you shed a little bit of tear because of the happiness. Um, but, you know, thus now kind of a couple more <laughs> matches in. Um, what have you like, what are your takeaways? Like, what are you what do you learn aside from I think you said um, your dad told you not to make on, eye contact uh, when you're doing your entrances, but what else have you learned in the in the processes? <laughs> oh man first off I love that you know that because that was a really funny part about my debut was my parents like don't look at us <laughs> in your debut and I fully broke that rule um as far as takeaways you know it's really crazy because like my full like um routine going into matches has completely changed I remember like the day of my debut like I had a lot of anxiety and I knew I was so I was like okay this is my first match this is like happening and I knew like like I'm not trying to like toot my own horn but like I knew a lot of people were gonna be watching and I was like okay like this is all on me obviously like I'm the performer here so you know I was I remember just being so nervous that day and then now like as and this is like obviously with experience and I know like a lot of pro, probably every pro wrestler has experienced this but as you start building up more matches you know you get a little bit more, more calmer and I still get super nervous before my matches um but it's you know like, I remember my first match, like, I was so unorganized, like, I had, like, I was in, like, my own little corner, but, like, my stuff was, like, all over in that little corner, and, like, now I'm definitely a lot more organized, but as far as going back to the question, as far as takeaways, I think with each match, I learn a lesson, whether it's, you know, I hate saying, like, whether it's good or bad, but honestly, like, that's what each match presents, you know, I, like, you know, I've had my, my fair share of really good lessons throughout, you know, the 10 matches that I've had, I feel like I'm speaking like I'm a veteran, but and by all means, I'm not, um, but I, you know, my, all my matches, like I've all, I've walked away from each of them with a lesson and I would say like my past two matches, I really have like super enjoyed them. Um, for those who don't know, my past two matches, the first one was, um, Tiffany Nieves mm -hmm. at WrestleCade. Um, that was one of the two. And then the second one, which was this past weekend. Yeah. Um, was, was against Kylan King and like honestly like just those two matches were so much fun for me you know being able to work with girls like Tiffany Nieves and Kylan King two people who I absolutely adore it was really, really awesome um but yeah with each match you know I walk away with something different and it's something that I really really am grateful for but I think the, the one common thing that I always walk away with is that I still love this and that you know I wouldn't change it for the world yeah the, 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 being able to train for something and then actually fully realizing it um you know especially in the long time that you've kind of been a fan and trained and now you're in it like you're in the ring it's probably so surreal um and then you know when i first when you first mm -hmm. like, I've known of you for a long time but then i was like oh man she's wrestling and much wrestling at mission pro i felt like there was no other place to like kind of start there's other places but mission pro holds a really you know special place in my heart because of Thunder Rosa. Um, so with that experience, um, have you received any advice from Thunder Rosa and what was your experience at Mission, Mission Pro on a whole? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Thunder, first off, I really just have to give Thunder her flowers. She's been so awesome. Um, and it's been really awesome to be working with Mission Pro. And I, you know, when I was planning out my debuts, more like the end of last year, um, I was really thinking about my debut and I knew it was like time to start thinking about it. Um, I knew I wanted to be in a place where I would be protected and I would feel safe because I think, you know, throughout the years of being, you know, kind of growing up in the pro wrestling industry, like I have been in, you know, places where I like haven't really felt protected or like, you know, where people would be like, oh, why is she going there? And it was like sometimes really tough because I'm like, I don't really know like what goes on like with this, with exit fill in the blank company like I'm just here to you know work um but I think with Mission Pro it's different um you know I go in there and I just I feel very safe you know I don't feel like I have to guard myself and that's something I really really do appreciate um going back to Thunder Rose let's see where was that okay yeah so Mission Pro yeah so when I 
like I said, you know, when I was planning my debut, I was very adamant about being in a place that I felt protected and, you know, a place where I didn't feel like I had to guard myself, which was really, really important to me because I think growing up in the pro wrestling industry, there I have unfortunately been places where it was like, you know, where I didn't feel safe. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I should be here or not. Mm -hmm. um, and that wasn't the case at all with Mission Pro, which was something I was so excited about. I remember my first show and I was like, okay, we're in the right place. Um, but when I was planning my debut, which was kind of the end of last year, I knew I wanted to be with Mission Pro um, just because the reputation and basically their mission for women's wrestling. And so I was on Busted Open with Thunder Rosa and threw out the idea um, that I'd want to have my debut. And I was hoping she would say something about Mission Pro, but if not, I was going to mention and like see if something happened. Um, and so I said, I said my debut, mentioned my debut, I didn't mention anything. Mission Pro, and I was like, okay, if she said it and I have to say it, I guess it's meant to be. And it really was. Um, from there, we just talked, and you know, everything was planned out so perfectly. And I really am so grateful for the entire Mission Pro team. Um, not just Thunder alone, but like everybody else from behind the scenes to all the performers. Like everybody has been really incredible. But going back to Thunder Rose, I definitely want to give her her flowers. Um, she's been so amazing and I really am like so grateful to have her in my life and to be able to go to her for stuff um, and to talk about talk like to her about advice and like stuff that I need help with so yeah it's it's been really awesome to work with Mission Pro and you know I always look forward to when they have their shows um, which for those who don't know their next show is February 10th which is very exciting mm -hmm. looking to get my first win in Mission Pro on that day um, I have a feeling it's gonna happen I have a you know, new year, new me. <laughs> there it is, 2024. Um, with that, when you, because you made the, well, I saw the announcement on social media and stuff like that. So when you made the announcement, did you, were there people who contacted you before and after your match? Like, you know, for instance, wrestlers and stuff like that, like, you know, kind of showing their support? I did receive a lot of support about like around when I was announcing my debut. And I know I did like multiple announcements. Um, because leading up to my debut, I really was like, oh, I really want this to be a total rebrand. Because before it was, you know, it was just Izzy Mania and like the hot tag with Izzy, my broadcasting stuff. But I was thinking about Izzy Moreno and that brand. I was like, man, I want this to be like a total gear shift. But I still wanted like people to recognize me. I didn't want it to be like, okay, who is this chick? Right. Um, so that's where the logo came in and, you know, like just my social media um, which I'm really, like, I'm really proud of. And I got to get credit where credit is due. And so my management team, they killed it with helping me out and everything where from the logos, to, like the merch. Um, so yeah, I did do multiple announcements and it was cool just to like, see everybody, not just the fans, but also like my close friends, like, okay, what's happening? Cause I didn't really tell anybody. I was just like, you know, I tell my friends, like, like I'd show them the videos and they were like, oh, that's cool. And then like, when I post it, they'd be like extra hyped. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it was like just cool to see everybody's support. And like when I finally announced it, it was like, oh snap. So it's it's been a lot of fun. And like, honestly, like it's cool to like, like be one of them now. Cause before I was just like, I was kind of like on the outside and now like, I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm a wrestler. Like I'm like, what have you guys is now? It, I mean, it's so, it is, like I said, it's great to see as far as, you know, living out your dream. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, we were missed to say we were all introduced to you through WWE and NXT, and we know of your relationship with them. Um, you've also said in interviews that, you know, you're waiting till you're 18 to to have um, the tryout. So has there, you know, has Triple H, Stephanie, anybody from the WWE exec um, quarters reached out to you one and then you know are you are you guaranteed this tryout or are you just putting it in the universe just like you put it in the universe I'm gonna be a wrestler like it's gonna happen oh I'm definitely putting it out into the universe um there has I don't want to oh shoot I don't know if I've been allowed to say um there's I will say I will say um there's been signs from the universe that I am doing stuff right um, well, there's people reaching out to me um, and everything, which has been really awesome. I'm really, really excited. Um, but like, it's it's so crazy because, you know, I'm 16 now and I'm turning 17 in May. And like, that means like we're basically a year from me possibly getting a tryout. And I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. So like, literally, like, 
as the the this year is ending, I'm like, man, like January's gonna hit, we're gonna be like a year and a half away, and then like May, we're gonna be a year away, and it's just like it's so crazy. Um, and I'm like super excited to tell people like I'm moving to Texas after I graduate high school, so it's kind of like June, July, yeah. um, and I'm gonna be living living in there living there for a year, which kind of gives away my plans for what I want to do. Um, but yeah, like I'm really, really, really excited. It's like you know. It's so funny because I keep on like comparing this to the Olympics. Like every like people train for the Olympics like their entire life, and this is like, like I feel like this is like I've trained for this my entire life, and I'm like, oh my god, it's almost here, and I'm going to be so unwell when it finally does happen. Like it's it's a really fun feeling. It's it's cool to think about this stuff. Nice. I mean, congratulations in advance. We'll put it in the universe that you Thank are. You. Gonna make it. Um, I mean, you did <laughs> reference that you are moving to Texas. So, are you going to be? Um, you know, training with Mission Pro, or are you gonna train with Booker T School? What's what's the game plan for Texas? Yeah, so I'm actually so my pro wrestling school, my current pro wrestling school is um, the Hybrid School of Wrestling, which is in San Antonio. Um, and so, you know, I talked to I talked to my coach, Coach Marvel. Shout out to him. Um, I talked to him, and I was like, Hey, like, what do I have to do to get to the next level, and where do I have to be? You know, to like realistically be where I want to be when I'm 18. And, you know, he told, he straight up told me, he was like, you're going to have to move here. And I was like, okay. And I was like, yeah, like I was already planning on doing that after high school. And so he, he literally said to me, he was like, listen, if you spend a solid year for me, he was like, you're going to be insane. And I was like, okay, cool. And I really do trust him. Um, My coach is really, really amazing. He's taught me so many cool moves and stuff. Like it's insane. And like, he's like my second dad, like honestly, and him and my dad are really close. So it's super funny to like, whenever like I go to training and it's just me and my dad and then my coach shows up, it's like, it's honestly my worst nightmare. Cause I have my dad and then my coach slash for wrestling dad. I'm like, Oh snap. I'm going to like literally be killed today. Um, but no, I'm like legit. I'm so excited to be training for pretty much a year, kind of full time at the hybrid school of wrestling. It's an amazing school in San Antonio. And it also means I'm going to be like, pretty much super local to Mission Pro, which they also run out of San Antonio. Um, I've done all of their, like, like all their shows since my debut. Um, but it's just like, I always have to like travel for them. So it's like definitely gonna be more convenient. And then the possibility of doing more shows in San Antonio. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. And San Antonio really has become my second home because I've stayed there for like, I stayed there pretty much for the entire summer um, this year. And then like, like I've stayed there a lot. And so it's my second home. So like, I feel like I'm an unofficial San Antonian, so I'm I'm excited to become an official one. <laughs> there it is. I like it. Um, let's talk a little bit about your grandmother. So you say you're using you use her maiden last name. Um, I just talk about mm-hmm. when when I saw you said that it instantly made me think of my grandmother because she, you know, they just they they just amazing. Like whoever like grandmothers are just amazing. They just have a different thing and they just leave so mm-hmm. much. Um, an imprint on us, and clearly she has. If you're, you know, the fact that you're using her last name, so let's give you a little shout out. Like, what what was she like? Why did you choose to use her last name? What was their impact on you? Yeah, so my great grandmother, she's like, like, oh man, she's done so much for my family. She really was like, almost like the matriarch of you know, strong women. Like, she really just like, especially like, I think my it's this is on my mom's side. Um, and my mom is Colombian, and so you know I'm Colombian. Like my whole my whole mom's side is Colombian, so I think like for us it was super important for us to really just chase after whatever we wanted. And like growing up, my mom, like her family, they you know they struggled with money. So I think like I think my mom is a prime example of like the impact my great grandmother has had. Um, and so you know my mom, she um, like she got her bachelor's degree, I want to say, like, two years ago, like, she has, like, busted her butt, so, like, literally, like I said, like, that is, like, a prime example of the impact my great-grandmother has had, and I think that's definitely has translated over to me, um, because my mom has definitely raised me well, (laughs) um, but yeah, like, I think when I was picking out my, you know, I was thinking about my name, I knew I wanted to stay with Izzy, um, because I was, like, you know, that's, you know, everybody calls me that every pretty much shows me as that so I didn't want to like change go too off and then you know when I was I I know there was like a couple other choices that I had and I was like yeah yeah and then my mom said what about Moreno and I was like oh I really like that and then she explained it to me and I was like 
oh, I really like it, like, a lot. And so, like, when I, when she told me a little bit more, I was like, okay, yeah, this, like, has to be it. And I think, like, Moreno, I don't, there's just something about it that I just, was like, it fits with me. Um, you know, before I, you know, it was Izzy Mania, and I think it's, like, a little transition and a little kind of, like, rebirth of it almost. So I really, like, I personally really like it. I'm really glad, like, how it happened. And definitely the story behind it. Yeah, I like it too. Um, you talk about Izzy Mania. You've been in the public eye for quite some time. Um, you know, first as a fan, then you had your podcast. Now you're wrestling. Um, what has been the fanfare since you debuted as a wrestler? Like how I, I've seen some of the videos and some of the little girls and stuff like that. Like they seem to be fans of you. So what's that? What's that feeling been like? Oh, it's been amazing. Oh my goodness. I think this past show Mission Pro, it was really awesome for me because I literally came out and, you know, I know there's always going to be like a ton of little kids in the crowd, which I'm like always hyped for. And like, since my debut, like I've made them like, like huge fans of me. Cause like it literally, I, I, I don't even think like when they first met me, they knew who I was. Like I literally just gave them a bracelet and it just grew from there. And I was like, yeah, so I was like, like, I feel, sometimes I feel like I'm the witch from Hansel and Gretel. I'm like, here, have this bracelet. And then they're like, all with me. And I'm like, let's go. <laughs> um, But literally, like, I came out this past weekend. And, you know, I was like, I was posing for my friend, Tesla um, who's was this amazing camera guy. And literally, they all just like started to crowd around me. And I was like, like, one came up and hugged me. And then like, they scurried away and then the next one came up to hug it was the cutest thing and like they all came out and like it's such a good feeling because I remember when I was eight I was sharing those moments with Bailey that um I really was like man this is what I really want to do one day not just wrestle but have this connection with the crowd mm. specifically the kids because you know I'll never forget that feeling of you know going to shows and just feeling so like in awe of these people in the ring so I was like I, I want to do that for sure and that was that's there was something so key about when I was creating Izzy I and who, you know, I kind of like to think of her as a different, per like, as another person, um, like, we're, like, you know, I'm Izzy Moreno, but, like, I like to think, like, oh, what would she do, like, how would she act, like, what would she wear in real life, you know, what would she wear outside the ring, um, and so, you know, I, you know, I knew, like, Izzy Moreno's fans, like, it had to be the kids, because I think that's, like, the greatest demographic you could hit ever, mm -hmm. um, so literally, and so when I, debuted at mission pro was like okay yes this is it so now like honestly like i love that at mission pro like i see a ton of izzy shirts and i'm like yes i'm doing it and it's like so cool because like the little kids will get it and then their parents will get it go get the shirt and i'm like now we got the family and it's such a good feeling and it, like it really makes me so happy at the end of the day just to like see all my little fans and they're like all show up for me and then they all have their bracelet and then sometimes they'll make bracelets for me it's the cutest thing ever. And I also love when like I give them a bracelet and then they like start scrambling for something to give to me. So like I've had people give me like rings. Um, I had this um older she gave me this like beautiful bracelet. And I was like, Are you sure? She said, Yes, have it. And I was like, Okay. Um, yeah. So it's like the fan the reception from the fans has been really, really amazing. Um, not just online, but especially in person. It's really it's very different in person. Um and it at the end of the day, that's all that matters to me is, you know, my fans and the kids and the people that come up to me. Yeah, you're forming that connection. And that's, you know, mm -hmm. that, if you if nobody came up and you're just wrestling, it's just kind of like, well, you know, yes, you're doing it for the love of wrestling, but for, for people to really invest in you, that's like a good, that's a good feeling. Because literally, that's, that was like my big view when thinking about my character, I was like, I was like, I, I don't care if I do the most basic moves in the right? like, I just want to connect with people and I want people to feel something and feel something when I'm in the ring and I think that really hit me when I was at WrestleCade and I had my match against Queen Nieves because um you know I I used to get like I whenever I'd like text my coach I'd be like oh what do you think of this move that I should do he's like listen just do the stuff you're good at he was like this is like your ninth eighth match he was like you're good he was like don't change it up yet and I said yeah I was like okay and it's like for me I was like oh you know I just want people to like the moves I do but then when I was at WrestleCade I realized that it wasn't the moves it was literally just like 
me that people were like Mm -hmm. invested and I was like okay I now I completely understand what my coach is saying and he is 1000% right and so he gave me like a look like the I told you and I was like yeah yeah whatever um but literally at WrestleCade like that was the coolest crowd to be in front of it was like it was my biggest crowd definitely and I was just like when I came out I was obviously emotional um which we should have just but literally that crowd was so amazing like legit they were just so like passionate and I feel like I got every pro wrestling chant under the sun like I was like yeah I feel like I made it even though (laughs) I have it I was like this is really cool so yeah it was you know connecting with the fans it's so much fun like I really do love it and um last question before we get out of here you've been watching wrestling for a long time um how has wrestling changed from when you it first because it's interesting because you know, you're, you're getting older, you're, you know, you're, you started off when you were eight, now you're a teenager, you've experienced different things. How has wrestling for you changed um, from then to now? Oh, man, it's changed a crap ton, I feel like. I think, like, I don't, like, honestly, like, I would definitely say, like, women's wrestling is, like, that's, like, the elephant in the room with, like, how much pro wrestling has changed, and it's, like, but it's changed in the best way possible. Um, It really has, you know, the, the interview, yeah, I just today, um, I would just talk about Denise Monet and the Bianca Belair. It's like everybody that's a part of the women's evolution, like, like every single person. And, you know, even the wrestlers today, like they're paving the path for the next generation. So girls like me. Um, so really, it's been really just so awesome to see the changes throughout the years. And, you know, because I, when I started to watch wrestling, you know, it was still the Divas era. And, you know, it, it were given like three, five and then it matches and you know now they're like the matches are amazing and they're given a lot more time and it's just really cool to see that like I really think like or you know any other like other women's all women's companies you know it's really really awesome and like I'm so grateful for the changes you know a lot of people take change as a bad thing mm-hmm. but in this case the change was something really beautiful there it is um Sorry, last question. I saw I saw you posted a picture with Serena uh, D. Yes, of course. Um, what was that? What was that meeting like? Because you went to mm-hmm. one of her seminars. Mm-hmm. So, like, what did you take away from that? Oh, that was a really fun seminar. I remember that was like I think that was my first seminar in a while, and I was so excited. Um, I you know I took away a lot from that because you know she was um, she used to be a, a coach at the PC, so you know like picking her brain and basically like being in the ring with somebody who basically knows what they're looking for, knows, you know, the ins and outs to that type of stuff. It was really awesome. Like I love learning um, from her and working with her. It was, a, it was a really cool summer. Like that was one of my favorites. Um, and I have to, I have to um, shout out to another um, really awesome seminar, which was at the hybrid school of wrestling. It was this summer um, with a seal. That one was so much fun. He was at the school for the entire week um and you know hybrid has four rings so he went to each ring on a different day and so he went to my ring and I, I it was just really awesome and then one night he wrote workshop and oh my god that was so much fun so yeah those two seminars were awesome the Serena Deeb one was amazing so was the ACL one both of them like I learned so much what's the game plan for 2024 oh mm, it's I'm excited for 2024 I think First off, first thing on the list is to get my first one admission for wrestling for sure. That needs to happen um, because, you know, I've lost all my matches at Mission Pro and I can't keep letting all my BFFs, like, it needs to happen. And, you know, I know, you know, all the girls who I face so far are very tough, but, you know, hopefully I get my first win and maybe that lead into me getting another shot at Mission Pro title and then I actually win the title this time. Um, what else? You know, obviously taking bookings, you know, I, I'm i looking to work WrestleMania week, which is going to be really awesome. It'll be my first weekend wrestling, WrestleMania, um, which would be so cool. Um, and then, you know, like I said, I, I'm graduating. I'm graduating high school next year. Super excited about that. And then moving to Texas. So, yeah, next year is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. And then 2025, ooh, we're excited for 2025. <laughs> There it is. Uh, with that being said, where can people find you? How can they support and all the good stuff? Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, 
and TikTok. Um, we just restarted the TikTok again. Um, for Twitter and Instagram, it is it is the mania ITS TikTok. It's just Izzy Mania, I Z E Y N A N I A. Uh, you can shop the shirt that I'm wearing at Almage.com, brand new Izzy Moreno, Almage t shirt, or you can shop my pro wrestling t shirt. Um, but yeah, be on the lookout. You can look at my social media, find out where I'm going to be next if I'm coming to a show near you, which would be so awesome. And then if I see you guys, we will be BFFs and I'll give you guys a bracelet. Just let me know. <laughs> there it is. Thank you so much, Izzy. I wish you the best of luck, the graduation the uh, move to Texas, the uh, tryout that you're going to make in 2025. Thank you. Awesome stuff. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching. My name is TK Trinidad. You can follow me on everything at TK Trinidad. Follow Women's Wrestling Talk on everything at WW Talk Pod. Thank you guys so much for watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Till next time, guys. Ciao. Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet.